This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Every year we have forest fires here in Northern California near our lodge by Yosemite National Park. The sky is gray and the air blue with smoke. Thousands of acres of woodlands and mountain homes, ranches and cabins reduced to charred shards and powdered ash. And newspaper, radio, and television reports of stunned families standing wet-eyed before the smoldering ruin and rubble of what had once been their homes. A sudden shift in the mountain winds, and like an old pine-orange crate in a trash furnace, a wood-frame house collapses in a cascade of sparks and searing smoke. It's all gone, one woman wept as she answered the news reporter's questions. In 20 minutes, everything we had ever worked for in all of our lives was gone. But if that happened to you, wherever you are listening to this worldwide radio broadcast, if everything you had worked for, for all of your life, were suddenly, today or tomorrow, burned to a crisp in a fire, what is it that you would still possess? What would you still have left? What is it that still remains after everything else and your life is destroyed. Your thoughts, your feelings, your values, your soul, your irreplaceable personality, your faith, your hope, and your love, these spiritual things will stand untouched by earthquake, war, or flood, or fire. For these spiritual things are born of God, they are of God, and nothing of true spiritual value is ever lost in all this universe of universes. Your life consists not merely in the things that you own and the inventory of your cumulative possessions, for you are a spiritual being. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and no power upon this earth can destroy your true home. Your true home is this very universe itself. In my Father's house are many mansions, declared the Master. I go to prepare a place for you, for I am persuaded it is written that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Though everything else may fall, though all things earthly may crumble, yet still and ever the truth remains that the kingdom of God is within you. And said the Master, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you. If we work upon marble, it will perish, wrote Daniel Webster. If we work upon brass, time will efface it. If we rear temples, they will crumble to the dust. But if we work upon men's immortal minds, if we imbue them with high principles, with the just fear of God and the love of their fellow men, we engrave upon those tablets something which no time can efface and which will brighten and brighten to all eternity. Do you know that of the 109 colleges first established in colonial United States of America, 106 of those 109 were begun by religious organizations. The first president of Columbia University declared the chief thing that is aimed at in this college is to teach and engage the children to know God and to love and serve him in all sobriety, godliness, and righteousness of life. And Anna Jameson, the 19th century English art critic, once wrote that the true purpose of education is to cherish and unfold the seed of immortality already sown within us, to develop to their very fullest extent the capacities of every kind with which the God who made us has endowed us. End of quote. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, if there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character... There will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. And when there is order in the nation, there will be peace upon the world. But it all begins with you in your inner life, in what you think and feel and what you believe. What is your philosophy of life? That very word, philosophy, is from two Greek words, philo and sophia. It means literally the love of wisdom. But in the living of your life, on this planet pirouetting on its orbit in this small solar system, in this galaxy, on the edge of this swirling universe. One of the oldest questions, perhaps the most ancient question, is why? Why are you here? 
Where are you going? What is the reason, the plan, and purpose of your human existence? Is there some great, vast rationale and reason for mortal life? And if so, can it be found? How can it be found? How can you discover it? This is the question of the ages. And this is the answer of the ages, that beyond this universe, yet within your very soul, there is a great intellect, an omniscient intellect, which planned, designed, and created all of this from the very beginning of time and space. Each mortal upon this earth is an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this boundless being who created you and who loves you this very instant and who has a wondrous will for the living of your life and an eternal will for the living of your eternal life beginning right here and now. This very millisecond, if you will will it to be. There are only two forces in this world, Napoleon Bonaparte once said. They are the spirit and the sword, and the spirit has always conquered the sword. There was a young artist dissatisfied with his painting work, so he went over and borrowed the brush of a great, famous master painter. But that new brush did not make this young man's work one bit better. A friend of his said, it's not the master artist's brush that you need, he said. It's the master artist's soul and the master artist's vision. All great things begin in the inner life, in your soul, in your vision. What is it you aspire for? Your life, your family, your neighborhood, your planet, this world. What is it you really want above all other things in your experience? So the Master, whatsoever things you desire, focalize on that word, desire. He said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall receive them. Have faith in God. Desire is vital to the spiritual life. Two verbs have built two empires, wrote Augustine the philosopher, the verb to have and the verb to be. The first is an empire of things, material possessions and power. The second is an empire of the spirit, the things which really last. There was a reporter once talking to the great Charles Steinmetz, the scientist asking what line of research would be the greatest in development during the next 50 years. And this famous electrical engineer and physicist replied, I think that the greatest discoveries will be made along spiritual lines. Here is a force which history clearly teaches has been the greatest power in the development of men and of all of history, yet we have merely been playing with it and have never seriously studied it as we have the physical forces. Someday people will learn that material things do not bring happiness and are of little use in making men and women creative and powerful. Then the scientists of the world will turn their laboratories, said Steinmetz, over to the study of God. How do you live your life? What is the reason for your existence? Benjamin Franklin said, Here is my creed. I believe in one God, creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that he ought to be worshipped, that the most acceptable service we render him is doing good to his other children, that the soul of man is immortal and will be treated with justice in another life, respecting its conduct in this. And as I have studied decade after decade of the great lives lived upon this planet for thousands of years, again and again I have found the vast, overwhelming majority of the great men and women recognized and honored as such by human history have been men and women with a deep spiritual conviction of faith in God, a belief that somehow their lives, their time, their minds and energy could be utilized by the mind and the very energy of this universe, that their lives could be used by God, and so can yours. The deepest hope of the hurting human heart is for love. The deepest longing of the hurting heart is for love. The deepest faith of the hurting heart is that love will come to pass in his or her life again. For love is the morning and the evening star, the sunrise and the sunset of reality, the beginning and end of all things. God is love. Love is the light in another's eyes, the warmth of a mother's smile, the gentle strength of a father's guiding hand, the sympathy of a sister's soul, the belief of a brother that you can be all you can be, the firm affection of friendship, the heartfelt hope for another's success, 
the persistent prayer that all will be well for you, the ardent desire that someone will soar to the very heights of his or her possibilities. Love is that and more. Love is dreaming the divine dream for another. It is yearning the infinite good for another, longing the bountiful best for another, craving the cosmic good for another, intending the highest truth for another the bestowing of beauty upon another. Love is the great commandment, and God thus loves you with an infinite love this very instant. If only in faith you will dare to claim it. All things will become new for you from the inside out, from the outside in, from beginning to end, your down-sitting, your uprising. All things will become as new for you. And you will begin to live at last as you've longed to live for all of your life spiritually. As the child of this universe, you really are. As the son or daughter of God, you were born and created to be. For free literature on the spiritual life, things I've written on these very topics, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, you may abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, Questions University Students Ask, The Inquisitive Minds of Young People and What They're Wondering About. Write for this free literature, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, 93644. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, I'll spell it. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.